we just missed an opportunity to break above 70k to grab all the liquidity at the top, or maybe the opportunity is still there? I want to talk about that. Levels that we need to respect for a second attempt to break the highs. Guys, if you like this type of content, make sure that you're subscribed to the channel, hit the notification bell so you get notified every time I put out one of these videos. And if you feel like supporting the channel, watch this video at the very end and do not go anywhere without leaving a comment down below because those two things are telling very clearly to the YouTube algorithm that this content is worth watching by more people. So thanks so much for that. And I want to first take you through a few tweets that we were posting over the weekend that are giving us very interesting insights on what's going on right now at the moment. First of all, during the Trump speech, we saw how the daily candle was being rejected by this trend line. And this was forming a head and shoulders. It ended up invalidating and pointing sideways, as you can see in a later post. And then there was a second day, Sunday, that it started pointing upwards. But today on Monday, our candle is once again pointing down, forming this ugly head and shoulders formation on the daily. I also posted on Sunday the CME gaps that we needed to confront. The attempt to break 70 was really promising, particularly when looking at the open interest and the level of liquidations that were right above us. The full recipe for a short squeeze was right there. And I still believe it's still there. It's just a matter of getting the price high enough to trigger the explosion in the price. But looking at the CME gaps again on Sunday had me thinking, how are we gonna get to that 76K without later not causing a huge damage to come and grab these remaining CME gaps that are below 70K. So to be fully honest, I had a mixed bag and that's why as we started consuming the CME gaps, I started actually celebrating because CME gaps out of the way is a good thing. Believe me, they have such a strong bringing the market back down or back up even way later in the cycle, they attract the price not just with liquidity, but psychologically people keep repeating the fact that they are still there. And this causes the self-fulfilled prophecy with the investors. Notice as well that we have a CME gap in here. So we're gonna have a look at that one in the live chart. You can see that we came very close and we were about to fill the gap. This is located from 65.8 to 66.3. And right now we are building here a bearish flag. So potentially we might be getting it in the next few hours, maybe tomorrow. When it comes to the head and shoulders, I have redrawn the neck to better match this touch here and this touch there. Conveniently for me, by making the move from this into this, we are still above the neckline. This means that as long as the RSI is above 55, we are still above the neckline and we haven't broken down. If we break down, that will take us this whole high from around 55 into 44. So our support right now is 55. We shouldn't break the neck. And so far that neck hasn't been broken. That is located at 66.1. We are allowed during the day to go below that 66.1, but we need to close about 66.1. And if we broke down, we will be heading to the final target of 44. 44 will coincide with a retest of this important trend line that we have tested one, two times, three times in here, and then we broke below it. So in my opinion, that will print something like this, an inverse head and shoulders, with a retest of this trend line, it's a potential second attempt to break the highs. That is not something bad, in my opinion. And I will prefer, notice as well that on the daily, we had one and two bearish divergences on market cipher, one and two bearish divergences. And so far in this range here, we still don't have bearish divergence from market cipher. The open interest made it to 22 billion, and right now we are at 20.5 billion, and we haven't printed any red candle yet. Those ones could come if we have a strong sell off from where we are. So, so far, everything is in green. This is just building up more momentum for a potential breakout. Big wells, they still don't start withdrawing. Deposits are way higher than withdrawals, which is not a great thing. But when it comes to the chart, so far, the chart doesn't look yet guaranteed that we are going to go necessarily for another test of the lows of the megaphone pattern. 
I left two possible outcomes. None of them are guaranteed, but we can see that the white outcome so far, we have completed the first two legs. We went to the top, we got a rejection, we are coming back to the bull market support band, which is interestingly perfect by the dollar. So, so far, two steps are clear. If we want to see a very quick recovery with a breakout, we should be seeing it in this or next week. I think spending too much here might have a similar effect than this, just grabbing more liquidity from logs just to get damp, to hit all those stop losses and liquidate all those accounts, causing the open interest to make a full trip from the 21 billion mark back again into the 15 billion mark. And we don't want that, but we still leave this option here in case later this week we start breaking inside the bullish support band and even worse, Sunday closing below it, then it's almost guaranteed that we're going to see it once again as resistance like we did here and potentially going back into that 49k, hopefully this time becoming the spring that we need to make that move fast for the long expected breakout. We have a tweet from Alex Kruger that really captured my attention. I won't read everything. You can pause the video, but basically we are overlapping the Russell 2000 with the price action of Bitcoin in the low time frames, And you can see how perfectly well Bitcoin is following the moves of the Russell. And it's quite making a lot of sense because both of these are risk on assets. And there seems to be an expectation that if Trump wins, then risk on assets are going to run, starting with crypto. If we go to the indexes, the Russell is the only one that has broken out in here and coming back for a retest opposite to what the DXY is doing, which has already lost almost 10% in drawdown and the S&P a little bit more mild, but still almost 5% too. On the four hour, I have also adjusted the limits of this pattern that seems to be constricting into a squeeze. Most things start from the four hour, so it's good to keep always track of what's going on in this chart. Right now, potentially we are holding the support at 42 and I have added to the RSI reverse an area of 67, which is the top of the range in here, possibly 66, depending on when we go to that top. And in the price action, that is located almost at 71K. So if we were to hold this support and make a full trip back to the top, that will take us right above 70, possibly 71K. That also coincides with the first resistance of the CPR, which we failed to touch this time. We were very close to touch it, around $300 difference. One of the things that I'm trying to keep observing is how are we reacting here in the structure? We got higher highs and higher lows. This low here, the close is higher than this close in here. Very small difference, but this was the order block that pushed the price straight into over 70K. Now that we are seeing this rejection, the rejection is taking us to this low that is higher than this one. It's good to stay level headed, even though that rejection was very impulsive. We are still holding 66K and we are still above the pivots. So nothing is guaranteed, but I think the most important message in this video is that we still have chances to make another push and end up breaking above it. I want to discard the idea that we need to take for granted that we are necessarily going to go to 51K and visit the bottom of the megaphone pattern once again. Let's go and let's see the liquidity to try to understand what's going on. I can perfectly understand that the incentive to make a U-turn here and instead of going for this liquidity at the 50s, Wells changed their minds and they were aiming to grab this liquidity in here. There's an obvious path towards it and we were this close to get that liquidity. And this is not just a matter of taking it, but also to trigger the short squeeze that can catapult the price to 80 or 90K thanks to all of these billions being burned in minutes. And the fact that we are still here tells me that they might still have the intention to go for that. Things can change anytime. There are some news as well of some movements in the US government with $2 billion 
Let's look at the recap from Charles. Presidential candidates pledge Bitcoin reserve, US Fed treasury and RRP liquidity now growing. The hash rebounds by signal last week. That is also great. Empty Gox in Germany selling done. In this case, I wouldn't be so sure with the selling. With Germany, yes, but with empty Gox and large wells, we see loads of deposits. We need to understand whether they are still in the exchange because they are planning to sell at higher prices or maybe they have it still in the exchange in case they start feeling unconfident and potentially selling. That's something that is still not clear to me. Five month consolidation at highs. Yet again, that is bullish. Bitcoin ETF flows growing. Yes, we can see there was very good price action coming from the ETFs. We have 124 yesterday and creditors from FTX are expected to receive 15 billion in cash. And there's an expectation that some of that should go into crypto or let's say it stay in crypto. 100% chance of rate cut in September as per Fed Watch 2. As I told you yesterday, very clearly, I will never long ride below resistance. Being below 70K is resistance and no matter how excited you get of the price finally breaking above it once again, that's an area of a huge amount of risk. The areas that I prefer to trade within these last months were all located at the bottom of the megaphone pattern as we've been studying for months. That is the pattern that we should be expecting at this time during the cycle. Make sure that you follow me on Twitter. My handle is Trading Parrot. When looking at the order book, something interesting is happening. When we were crashing in here, there were some buy orders at 60K. Of course, they pulled them out. That is hint number one. And then there was resistance at 69. And as the price started coming closer to 69, here at 67, almost, the orders from 69 were pushed away to 72.6. So this sort of overreaction in here seems a little bit silly, but potentially is because someone is expecting that the price can get as high as that. It just gives us an idea of sentiment. It doesn't guarantee anything, but it's worth noting. Price comes to this and they push it away. So they do think that there is enough energy to get to there. And they were not intending to short this because you can see the price coming in and they pull out. The same goes with this. This was coming lower. They put an order at 60. Right after the bounce, they pull it out. With this bounce in here, the order hasn't been replaced at the same price. So they did change their minds. I want to look at the liquidity on high block capital. That's also interesting. Yes, we went for these high levels of concentration of liquidity coming from the past one month. But by looking at the six month and the one year, you can clearly see where is the big price. And since we went all the way down to 53 and we left this one there and in the one year, there's quite a high big one also at the bottom range, I can clearly tell that the vast majority of the liquidity is above us. This one on the one year looks like it's doubling the amount of liquidity at the top compared to what we will get if we crash to 52k. Is it still possible 52k? In trading everything is probabilities. So if you were fair to this pattern and you will have to give one point to every single thing, you will give one point to the fact that there is double liquidity at the top and you will give another point to the fact that the price is right there next to that liquidity relative to the distance of going to the bottom end. When looking at trading different, I can confirm that this is the case. And I'm pretty sure that if there was more liquidity at the bottom on this rejection, the price will have already made halfway through towards the next end. But instead of that, it has pulled back 5% and we are still a lot closer than the 17K that we will have to move right now to take the lower end liquidity. Guys, I'm running this position airdrop on Bybit. You trade with $100, you get for free $500 additional. There's a link at the top of the description that contains all instructions on how to do that. There's also a referral link that if you use to sign up for a new account on Bybit, you can claim up to 30,000 in rewards. If you have an account on Bybit using my referral, 
make sure that you provide your UID here in the Bybit Perks channel, and then you can claim 70% discount on any Trading Parrot subscription. With that, you're going to be able to access a vast library of power tools that are going to help you navigate much better the market, automate trading strategies, use the 70% discount if you have a Bybit with my referral. If you already have a Bybit, you can transfer it to my referral with the instructions I left on my Discord server. And there's also a video that I made with instructions on how to get a Palau residence card. In one week, you can be trading on Bybit from pretty much anywhere in the world. If you're not ready for that, still join my Discord server. You can browse the strategies gallery. You're gonna find many that you can just copy, learn, engage with the community, use the picnic that gives you value for zero dollars, or use the free trial of, of server to get a gist of how it is to automate trading strategies. I'll see you there. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.